so a couple rules about the pitches. Everybody who pitches up here is going to get 10 minutes. It's going to be counted by this timer. You're going to hear a gong at the end of your pitch. You're going to hear a start buzzer before you start your pitch. We're going to keep it very clean, tight to 10 minutes, okay? After that, we're going to have five minutes of QA where I'm going to be going around. Raise your hand if you have a question about the pitch, you want to hear something, you don't understand something. Five minutes, we're going to cut it off, okay? Everybody understand? You ready to get this shit started? All right, cool. Uh, our first pitcher tonight, I think, is Mark Miller. So we're going to turn this over to him. And it's, Mark, as soon as you hear the buzzer to go, that's when you're going to start, okay? Your mics are right there. Hello. Should have known better than to name my show in the beginning. Sure, far away to be the first one. <laughs> boom, boom. Mark, Mark, ready? I'm ready. <laughs> in the beginning, a caveman rock opera. Cue the animation. Featuring some aliens. <laughs> All right. So this show starts off with a big bang. The Big Bang. Every show has to have a beginning. We're starting at the beginning of the universe. This, what you're hearing now, this is a song that I composed. Something like this will play as dancers enact the creation of the universe. Black lights, smoke, lasers, uh, strobe lights. Fun stuff like that. This will have. We'll have real dancers when I do it. And I think that we'll actually we'll have to have some rhythmic gymnastics. That didn't show up, but you know, ribbon. Ribbon dancing. Oh, I think I have to click. Get going. Ribbon dancing, because you know, comets. Uh, jump ropes. Dancing with jump ropes. Why not? Pay attention to this song too, because this is an amazing song. Uh, you know, dancing with a ball. Planets, aka. A lot of people don't give the love to the rhythmic gymnasts, but they're amazing. Especially uh, in a group. Click again. There we go. Bam! Think of it, right? All right, click again. Look at that. So, as this ambient spacey theme winds down, oh man, my font's didn't. Okay, whatever. So, uh, the spacey intro is going to lead into this tribal part eventually. Wait for it. Here we go. Um, it's going to lead, and you're going to see this. some cavemen are going to come in, they're chasing a mammoth. Here's the drums. Alright, you can click. So the, they're chasing... Oh, animation failed me. They're chasing a mammoth. It's a big mammoth hunt. So we have a huge mammoth puppet. Click. Alright. Uh, there'll be some big drums on stage. They're going to be made to look like dinosaur skulls. There'll be minimal lyrics, if any. The only vocals might just be like grunts. They're hunting, they're killing the mammoth. We're killing him. All right, so we can click the next one. So all the cavemen die. They all die, but two of them. All right, click. The creature gets away. The song will kind of slow down. There'll be a starving tone. The survivors, they begin to fight with each other. All right? <laughs> Meanwhile, on another planet, click. Oh, forgot. So one of them's real strong, dance. One of them is smarter, or analytical. So we've, we've met our cavemen, OK? Click. Meanwhile, somewhere in space, there's a group of like alien interns. They're starting their project 
to uh, go and explore this new planet with this this teeming life. They're gonna. The aliens are really excited to see culture begin. So they're going off on their mission. But but there's a little scene. The head alien guy is like, "All right, guys. We know you're excited. Okay, he's gonna have a good time. But be careful. This culture, they got a lot of potential. But don't interfere. You're just watching." Because if you interfere, could be a big mistake. Could be a disaster. Next. So these aliens, you know, they're interns. I'm sorry if anybody's an intern, but you know, interns, they just goof off. And they're like, whatever, man. And they're, so then there's a song, and they're like a spacey song about, you know, adventure and all the crazy stuff that they're gonna, that they're gonna happen next. They rush off into the new horizon. But when they get to Earth, they get careless. Uh, there's, they panic, there's, uh, what do you call it? Well, the, the ship's shaking. Turbulence. turbulence, that's right, there's turbulence. They start, they start jettisoning things. Like, they're like little alien iPods and computers and things with all, like, their backpack with all the, like, pop culture stuff. Like, all that junk that you really shouldn't bring to work, but you do, they get rid of it. Uh, and, but then they unwittingly, they jettison their black box recorder, which has been recording everything they've been saying and doing since they left the planet. All right, next. So now we're back on Earth. The cavemen have seen this fireball coming, shooting off little fireballs. And the guys are fighting. They can't really make up their mind with click. Um, but when they get back to the rest of their tribe, they decide they're each... They're each going to take a different group to go off and uh, investigate something different. So the big aggressive guy, he takes his group and uh, he, he investigates the big fireball, which is the wreckage of the ship. And the more analytical guy, he's like, oh, I'm going to check out these little tiny fireballs. And that's the cargo. Next. So here we see aggressive guy going to wreckage other people going to cargo. From this, two trials will form that will later come into conflict. Next. So when they find the cargo, alien cargo, <laughs> it's, you know, Hal, yes, good one. It's all this stuff, you know, old computers, moon stuff, weird. And what this is, is essentially, it's, it's the aliens' Xbox. It's the aliens' uh, notebooks. It's, their, it's the aliens' book of crappy poetry and song lyrics. <laughs> That's basically what they found, and also the black box report. Next. The more aggressive aliens, they find the wreckage. And they're like, they're starving because they didn't kill anything. So next, they find a new food source. <laughs> they eat the aliens. And uh, we'll find out later the full magnitude of it, but by them eating the aliens, it gives them like mutant powers of like tele telekinesis and stuff. Next. So act two, the aliens are getting worried. The uh, interns haven't reported back. What's going on? So they make a search party. So the search party goes out. Click. There's another song where about, you know, what are we, we gonna rescue these guys? What on earth did it happen? You know, horrors they might find. All right, so what we're going to find out in that too is the, the cavemen have progressed, okay? Uh, the, the learners, as I call them, the people that found the cargo, they have developed these sort of like steampunk or stone punk type of things. <laughs> and uh, because it's, it's, you know, it's reproducible, it's knowledge. Really? Holy shit. Yeah. All right, so the, the eaters haven't gone as quickly. Next. Strange powers. Here, the learners, they've got some, some uh, you know, Flintstone stuff. Next. Uh, there might be a scene with like James Bond and Q, like here, this is what's happening. All right, so then the eaters, that's like, it's, they're in total chaos because some of them got to eat the aliens, some of them didn't. Next. All right, so the aliens land. Um, they're looking around, but the eaters saw them and the eaters are hunting them because they need more aliens. Next. You can read all that. I hope you're reading all that. Next. <laughs> Next. 
All right, so the aliens landed. They searched for the friend. Next. All right. They discover the learners. Now, the learners have formed basically a cargo cult based around all this weird alien pop culture. Next. <laughs> cargo cults. If you're not familiar, Wikipedia, okay? Next. <laughs> the learners, they discover the aliens. They worship them like gods. All right? Craziness. Next. <laughs> alien feast, all right? We find... I just found out on the internet. He had nothing. Um, they found the alien. They're roasting him. Next. Some of the aliens are trying to escape. They escape somehow. They go back. Next. <laughs> aliens regroup. They're like, alright, what's going on? They're eating us. No, they're worshiping us. We can't figure it out. Next one. Okay. So the came and discover each other. Click. Click. Alright, click. Why are you eating our God? Click. Why are you worshiping our food? Click. I hate you. Click. Do. Click. All right, we're going on Act Three. War is looming. Next. Go. Click. All right. All right. All right. Give it up for Mark Miller. Caveman rock opera. Yeah. There's only like a couple. Just. All right. Here we go. All right, we're gonna have five minutes of uh, Q and A for Mark. So just stand there, Mark. Anybody got a question for Mark Miller? John? <laughs> well, I think mean, there's like I don't know. Could you just click through like the last? There's no more like crazy. I'm not gonna talk. Just click two seconds. Click. There's a volcano erupts next. All right, click, click, click. Just click to the end because that's the most important. Spooky cave. Cave babes. Alright. Cave dudes. Let's hear more about that. Click, click, click. Instruments. That's a lip of. Okay, click one more time. Okay. Alright. Damn it. I was going to ask what makes it a bro show, but now I know. <laughs> there you go. Well, that's it. There's The rest of that stuff's just extra slides I forgot to delete, but we can hold there. Cool. Anybody else have a question for Mark? we got five minutes. Make it good. Anything? Something stupid. What's your sign? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Aaron's got a question. So tell me about the music in the show. What kind of music are you imagining other than the tribal thing, which was awesome? Well, um, I see it as sort of a clash of there's like this tribal, lots of drum thing, and then like sort of space pop, lots of synthesizer, sort of a combination of very tribal, uh, primitive stuff and very like futuristic, uh, futuristic type sounding stuff. All right. Anybody else? Yeah. There's lots of questions. Uh, how many, how many people Oh, I, uh, I haven't really thought about that. Um, it could be, I think it's a very scalable show. It could be done with a huge cast of like, I don't know, like 10 or 15. It could be done with a smaller cast of, I mean, maybe as few as five. But, yeah. I think it's pretty scalable. What do you see your involvement in the show being? Is this something you'd want to direct or something that you'd want to write and hand off? Uh, I feel like I would probably be maybe more of a creative director, you know, just sort of like overall overarching vision of it. Um, one of the things I want to do with it is try to incorporate some uh, some improvisation some into the the act into the scenes. So in that respect, I think that I could take on a director role. So I would say maybe creative director or just kind of co-director of things. But, I mean, I know my shortcomings. I'm not going to try and drive the ship. How do you see the set playing out? Are you thinking you're going to have space alien dudes up on Omega, Beta, and Alpha, and then... Yeah, Earth, I think, yeah, that'd be a good way to do it. Um, yeah, basically permanent spaceship up uh, up top, and then more of a permanent, like, craggy rock, rock environment on stage. Maybe a spooky cave. Anybody else in the back? Do the aliens come back, or does their story end after they come to Earth? 
Uh, well, see, I didn't get to it. What happens is there's the war. We don't know what's going to happen. The aliens come back to fix their screw up and uh, ultimately blow everybody up because everything got screwed up. They kill everybody, then a volcano erupts, and they're like, well, why'd we waste our laser juice? The volcano was going to erupt anyways. And then there's sort of a sitcom -y moment, and then they make a joke about anal probes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so in terms of the, the aliens themselves, are they like traditional, like big, gray headed, or green? Yeah, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. No, it's not going to be like Star Trek, where everyone's but, a humanoid. They're just grays. They're just regular grays, I think. Okay, so I when, mean, you, when you're thinking about just grays, how, how are you conceiving? Is it like a mask? Are you going to uh, I think body paint is a good way to go, uh, but I mean masks, masks, and uh, those uh, those Zio suits, or those you know Power Rangers suits that we got. That's Zentai. it. Fetish suits. All right, we got about one more minute for questions. Ryan. How many dinosaurs? How many? Oh. Uh, as many as we can fit. Right. Uh, on the note of the aliens, how will they be different from the ass bugs from the NASA? Completely. Uh, because the ass bugs were Abs uh, the ass bugs <laughs> were a, a new invented thing. With this, I mean the the aliens. I'm basically just they're they're uh, they're just grays, you know. I'm not trying to invent a new kind of thing. It's the traditional alien with the almond eyes and the white skin and the bulbous head. Um, you know, I'm not worried about being too referential. I mean, I think we're pretty. Self referential in many respects, anyway. So, but I mean, I don't think there'll be any con comparison. How do you see the music work with this? Is this uh, would this be live band or would this be mostly recorded? I, I want it to be live band. I actually I wanted I want to have like large drums that look like uh, dinosaur skulls that that the cast actually plays. <laughs> there you go. All right, thanks so much. Give another hand for our killer. Uh, Mark. Oh, we're gonna have